I decided to drink a glass of wine every day, and here's what happened. Tons of studies have shown that drinking a glass of wine every day is incredibly beneficial for your system. It removes toxins from your body and improves your brain function. Well, I decided to find out for myself whether these statements are true by having one glass of wine a day for a whole month. And here's how it all went down. It's worth mentioning that I'm 28 and I'm not really a big fan of alcohol. I like hanging out in the bar or organizing a house party with my friends once a week or so, but that's about it. Having read lots of different articles about how wine is good for your body in so many ways, I decided to give it a shot and try to figure out if there's any truth to this. Plus, the experiment itself sounds pretty awesome, right? Researchers and doctors say that dry red wine is the best one for our system. So that's what I went for and started drinking one glass of fantastic import from Chile every evening. Over time, I started noticing gradual changes in my mood and the state of my health. Some of the results were pretty shocking, to be honest. <sighs> the experiment started out great, actually. I felt super sophisticated having my evening wine in front of the TV. But on day three, I started having trouble sleeping. You see, I've never had insomnia or anything, and I'm definitely not a night owl. I usually go to bed at around 11 p.m., so it wasn't hard for me to figure out where these sudden sleep problems were coming from. The alcohol seemed to be messing with my sleep cycle. I was falling asleep way easier, but constantly waking up all night for no apparent reason and struggling to get back to sleep. Spending 10 to 15 minutes on my phone usually helped me fall back asleep, but after some time, I noticed another change. I started craving water during these little bedtime disruptions. In fact, this crazy nighttime thirst became so frequent that I would keep a glass of water on my nightstand. It all worked itself out though. At the end of the experiment, everything went back to normal and I was sleeping like a baby. After a couple of days, I started having a crisis of conscience. I felt like I was doing something wrong by drinking every single day. Maybe it was simply because I was so used to only drinking with my friends on the weekends as opposed to doing it any other time. On the bright side, it did teach me that I don't need to wait for some special occasion to have a good time. I threw a mini party of fine whining and dining all for myself every evening. After a while, I realized that there's nothing to feel guilty about. After all, I didn't have to finish the whole glass if I wasn't in the mood. Plus, I could skip a day whenever I wanted. With a clean conscience, I could enjoy my experiment more. Hmm. One of the best things that happened during the experiment was a change in how I partied with my friends. I would invite people over for a glass of wine, and those who were game showed up. Thanks to this, I was hanging out only with people I found truly interesting, or my closest friends. I'm an introvert, so spending evenings in my cozy home was definitely a nice bonus for me. I still keep going out with big groups of friends on the weekends just like I used to, but these let's hang out and drink beer type of get-togethers became less and less frequent. And on those days, I just had a little bit of beer and that's it. Uh -huh. In the middle of week two of the experiment, my appearance had changed. Unfortunately, it wasn't for the better. Maybe it's because I'd been staying home most of the time and eating more, but I did gain a couple of pounds. Not to mention, daily drinking had given me dark circles under my eyes and breakouts. Well, thanks a lot, fancy imported wine. I was also paying close attention to my health throughout the experiment. I checked my blood pressure every day, and I can say with confidence that alcohol didn't change a thing in that respect. My health was perfectly fine, but by the end of the experiment, I started having trouble concentrating, and I felt weak and tired most of the time. These new symptoms made getting through the workday quite a challenge. So what can I say now that the experiment is over? For one, drinking at home from time to time definitely has its perks. It's way cheaper than going to the bar every week, and you don't have to worry about doing something stupid or annoying bar patrons. Not to mention, you can just relax whenever you want, instead of waiting impatiently for the weekend all week long. Getting rid of unnecessary get-togethers is also a big reward from this experiment. It helped me figure out who I want to spend my time with, and who I don't mind seeing less often. Plus, I got so interested in the whole culture of drinking wine and eating cheese. The more you know about it, the more fascinating it becomes. On the downside, I can't agree with scientists on this one. In my opinion, drinking wine once daily does no good for your health, even if it's just one glass. Disrupted sleep, lethargy, and problems concentrating? No thanks. 
All in all, I'd say the most important thing I learned is that you shouldn't wait for a special occasion to relax and treat yourself to a glass of wine. Hmm. This kind of de-stressing will really clear your mind, but doing it every day, eh, not that great of an idea. Throwing occasional house parties with close friends, delicious food, and a good wine is the best. Scientists just keep on telling us that wine is incredibly good for our health and system. But what exactly is it good for? Well, according to scientists, the list is huge. For example, several pieces of research confirmed that wine reduces risks of cardiovascular disease and heart attacks. Apparently, wine dilates arteries and increases your blood flow that lowers your chances of having heart problems. Moreover, it was discovered that light wine drinkers very rarely suffer from cancer. The scientists at the University of Crete in Greece found out that wine may slow the growth of breast cancer cells. French scientists, in their turn, also made some great discoveries about wine, stating that it can slow down the growth of liver cancer cells as well. Sounds impressive, right? And it's still not everything red wine can do. According to a team from Loyola University Medical Center, moderate red wine intake can reduce the risk of developing dementia. It's again connected to your blood flow. Thanks to the red wine, you're provided with a good supply of blood to your brain. Researchers from Spain also reported that drinking wine may reduce the risk of depression. <sighs> well, that's not that big of a surprise, right? Wine makes everything better. The study, in which 5,500 men and women aged from 55 to 80 years old took part, showed that those who drank wine were less likely to be diagnosed with depression. And it works for any lifestyle and life story you may have. Your teeth, as it turned out, will also appreciate you drinking wine from time to time. The research published in the Journal of Agricultural and Food Chemistry showed that red wine can help prevent dental cavities, all because it removes bacteria from your teeth. Fewer visits to the dentist office is always a great advantage if you ask me. Just know your limits and take care of yourself. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and family. It'll be interesting to see their points of view on this topic too.